Jim wants your trauma. He wants your suffering. I'll give you a reaya. I'll give you a proof that not only is Hashem giving you the suffering, giving you the Holocaust, giving you cancer, giving not you, but you know the people of the past that died already. Giving people diseases, giving people trouble, giving people anxiety, giving people money problems, giving people child problems, giving people all of the disasters throughout all of history. He did it and he wants it. Not because he's a monster, but because he loves you and he knows that's the tool that's going to build you or break you. What's my raya? What's my proof? What do you know about it? He lived over 900 years, 930 years he lived. Did it mention that the Malachim were, uh, were doing a barbecue for him? No, that's the Gemara. Did it mention that he was a giant, he was so big and beautiful? No, doesn't mention an Etowah, that's the Gemara. Made a mistake, got punished, kicked out. Noah, 600 years we waited to meet him. 600 years he lived before we met him. We heard about it, he was born. Fast forward 600 years, and then there's the flood. What happened for 600 years? You must have done something. You know, Torah says, who cares? Who cares what he did for 600 years? The only thing that's mentioned about Noah, trauma. Noah, I'm gonna destroy the entire world. You got a year, you got a year. Okay, went to hell, built this thing, everyone was making fun of him. He saw the entire world destroyed in front of his eyes. He saw people melt. He saw the whole world destroyed to nothing. If that's not trauma, okay, let's go inside the ark. What happened in the ark? The lion hit him and he suffered the entire year he was in the ark. He suffered the entire time to the extent where he was spitting blood. Spitting blood in the ark. Avraham Avinu, 10 generations later. What do you know about Avraham Avinu? What do you know about Avraham Avinu? Avraham, believe everything that you know. Where am I going? Don't worry about it. Arrives, starvation. Famine. No food, no drink, no nothing. You have pretty much your clock to live is running out. Fast forward. Fast forward. By the way, you waited a hundred years. Okay, let me send you some guests. Let me send you some guests that uh, right after you chop off a piece of your body, unlike anybody else before you. I'm gonna send you guests on that day. While he was dealing with pain and agony, that's what's worth a lot to a Because that shows that you love him. If you get close to him through your trauma, through your difficulty, that means it's authentic, it's legit, it's a hundred percent. But if you're only going to say Baruch Hashem when you win the lotto, who needs you? Fast forward, what do you know about Yitzhak Avinu? What do we hear about him? One, he almost got killed. 37 years old, his father is about to butcher him. Why? For the sake of Hashem, mitzvah. Second thing is, his two sons are having a battle, one wants to kill the other. Yaakov, oh, what a life. What a life, his brother tries to kill him. On top of that, he arrives at the number one gangster's house in the world who cheats him for 21 years. How come you don't hear about all the good he had? for longer, got cheated more, then finally left, then, oh, okay, so I finally left this game home called Ravan, okay, I left, what happens, oh, by the way, uh, Yaakov, uh, 
Esav's coming with millions of soldiers to kill you. What else do we know about Yaakov? Oh, by the way, you said his favorite son dies but doesn't die. That's the life of Yaakov Avinu. Moshe Rabbeinu. Before he even reached a half a year old, they already tried to kill him. He had to live at the Satan's house, Paro. Then finally he comes back, gets thrown in jail by, by, by his father-in-law for 10 years. If that's not enough, he finally goes to Ami said to go help them. What happens? They'll curse him and yell at him. Why'd you bring us all this disaster? And they don't stop. That's the life of Moshe Rabbeinu. That's what we know about Moshe Rabbeinu. You don't have a single verse in the Torah that tells you Moshe Rabbeinu went on vacation, had a good time, had some time off, relaxed by the pool. There's nothing, there's nothing in the Torah that's not about trauma. Why? Because those difficulties are what built us as individuals and as a nation. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants. Is he wants you to use the suffering to connect to him. Because when he gives you no suffering, what do you do? You run away from him. That's why there's a verse in the Torah, in Sefer Dvarim. Don't forget Hashem. What do you mean don't forget Hashem? After he gives you prosperity, don't forget Hashem. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu says to Am Yisrael. To say that people that suffer or suffered do not get punished if they do not connect to Hashem and start following the Torah, is simply contradicting the entire Torah from Aleph Ataf. Because as you can see, the entire Torah is one big suffering, full of beauty and a unique and extraordinary and beautiful way to connect to our Father in Heaven that loves us more than we love ourselves. And that's why He's forced to hit us because he doesn't want to lose us. The suffering is for our benefit. The suffering is because he loves us. He gives us suffering because he doesn't want to lose us. Because if he doesn't give us suffering, we will forget him. And then unfortunately, he's forced to punish us permanently. So that's why he's forced to give us suffering. So we call out to Hashem, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Because we have nothing else. The money can't help us, the friends can't help us, the spouse can't help us, the kids can't help us, the rabbi can't help us. Nobody can help us other than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu is forced, because he loves us, to give us suffering because he doesn't want to lose us. But if we still don't listen, and with such reshaim, until the gate of Gehenom, we still don't do tshuva, what do you want him to do? Change the Torah for you? Because that means that he has to become a liar to all of the others that did keep his Torah and mitzvot. And he's not going to do that because his signature is emet. His signature is emet. He cannot lie even if he wants to. He cannot change even if he wants to. He's so glorious and so magnificent and so unlimited that he's limited himself to not being able to change. Baruch Hashem that you learned the truth today. Baruch Hashem that we learned the truth together today. Because now you'll know how to treat suffering from this point on. If it's suffering, it's difficult for me, that means Hashem wants my attention. That means Hashem wants to connect to me even deeper. Kadosh Baruch Hu loves us, but He also has rules. And He gave us those rules in a love letter called the Torah. That Torah is full of suffering, but also it tells you, if you overcome the suffering and you listen to the instructions and use that suffering to connect to me, you will be like one of the people that I wrote in 
inside the Torah. You'll be like Adam Rishon. You'll be like Noah. You'll be like Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, David, Shlomo. All the righteous people. Why? They suffered. They're in Gan Eden. Because they connected to me through the suffering. You do the same, you'll be in Gan Eden too. Be'ezat Hashem. This realigns our minds to the straight path, to the path of Emet, and gets us on the path to get to Gan Eden.